Hey everybody, it's Matt Schmidt here, and I want to go over the mind maps that are available um, right below this video. And these are for you to follow. Uh, I still recommend you going 100% through the videos. Do it over and over again until you have it clear and concise in your mind on how to do this process. But we wanted to give you the mind maps to follow as you are having your lead item go through the market and you're going through the product life cycles. So we're going to start with, obviously, where here it says start. Um, first thing we got to do, obviously, is find the niche, find the product, and understand the audience with our targeting selection. Um, these are in the fundamental videos. Um, these are going to be the base understanding of what we're going to sell. We don't want to build a store out until we know that uh, we know what the niche is, we know what the product is, at least the first lead item, uh, and then we understand that there's a Facebook audience out there. A lot of the times people will get caught up because they want to sell something so bad, but then they get to the Facebook audience targeting um, and it's not there. So we want to skip over that. We want to make sure all of these are understood. Uh, we want to make sure that we're moving into our store, um, installing our apps, and listing our first product to drive traffic to. Remember, the MVP model is about having that minimal viable product for you to launch a store around and start driving traffic and creating revenue. And then we're going to go into the introduction stage. If you have a fan page, we're going to use that. If you don't, we're going to go down this method. So just if you have a fan page of 10,000 fans or more, you're going to boost a $5 non-link 1200 by 1200 ad to that page with the product, you know, asking them if they would wear this product or buy this product. Basically, have them envision themselves utilizing the product, whatever it is, if it's a widget, have them say, would you use this widget? You know, something to have them envision themselves using that product. So we're going to analyze the results based off of some metrics that I list in that video. Uh, basically looking for great feedback. Uh, and then we're going to have, you know, that, like I said, the great feedback here is 10 cents or below. Then run this product, proceeds to the next mind map. If it's not 10 cents through one of the two methods. If you had a page or if you didn't have a page, you want to make sure that you're looking back at this product. If you had a very good engager type interest or if you had a page and you ran a $5 test to it with no link, there's no excuse for you not to get great cost per engagement if that product is desirable by the market. So if you're in the red here, you need to start over with your product. Find a new product. If you need to look at the target, Find a new target. If you remain in the same niche, your MVP model store will be fine and we'll just have to change out the product. So if we do have a good uh, item, if we have a really good item, uh, we're going to go forward into the next mind map here. So if you have a successful $5 test, we're going to, you know, here's the 10,000 fan page again. Um, this is a secondary step that you can do in conjunction with it. Um, if you're aggressive with this item. However, I typically start with the PPE uh, ads. Now, PPE ads need to be done for your social type interest. If you have something like an accountant calculator or something, whatever you're selling, you're not going to want to do a PPE ad. But if it's applicable to what you're doing, if it's social, if it's t-shirts, a piece of jewelry, PPE ads will work just fine. If you're more in the accountant calculator, uh, this might be the better, stronger ad for you, but it depends on what you're selling and who you're selling to. Uh, the, the perfect combination is to be able to run both of these, and that's generally in a more social niche. So if you have that 10,000 person fan page, it's a very similar motion here. Um, yes, let's create a boost with a link to the page. Set daily ad spend. So you don't want just to do the $5 total, you want to do the $5 daily or $10 daily or whatever you're comfortable spending right off the bat and then scale that up depending on the size of your page. Your page are going to be the most, uh, your page fans are going to be the most um, early adopter that you'll have, right? If you have a strong fan base and you should, um, your email list or your fan page should be the people that buy first from you because they have um, trust in you and associate with you uh, because they, they been marketed to by you, they've seen your name everywhere. We want to create that boost if we have the page. If we don't, if we're brand new, um, that's perfectly fine, or less than 10,000, which is really kind of brand new still. We want to create a PPE ad with a link to the same interest used in the $5 market test. So we proved it uh, that we had a great interaction uh, with the market test. So we want to hit that same audience again with the $5 uh, or $10 um, ad with a link. 
So we'll move here. If the market test CPE was one cent or below, consider doing a wide open modified ad. I show you a ad that got 0 0.003 cost per engagement and a $5 test. We went very aggressively after that product and that product did near six figures in itself. It was a $10 item and we did nearly six figures with it. So that is something that you can take into consideration. How well does your market react to it? That tells you how aggressive you can be. Run the ads for one day to see if the CPE gets below 10 cents. One day's spend should get you into a somewhat optimized state. It will lower from there if it's good, but you should have um, good data on how your ad is performing after one day. If not below 10 cents, consider killing unless profitable. Continue to run the ads for an additional two to three days to let Facebook optimize. If it is, kill the losers. We're, we're optimizing on engagement here. Engagement doesn't mean sales. Take that into consideration when you're running these. You can have a very low cost um, CPE, but if you spend $100 and it doesn't get you any sales, what good is it? So track your viral sales, track your um, paid sales, and make sure that you're understanding where these things are coming from. Scale your winners. We have a metric here that you can follow. And then find your ceiling to maintain ROI uh, and let Facebook analyze and re in each budget level um, before considering scaling and lowering the budget again. Okay? So we're going to move on to the next one, and we're going to scale into our growth stage. So this is a little bit more complicated. I'm gonna do it at the top level. I just want you to understand where we're going here. So we're in the growth stage now, which means our product is taken off and we've gotten fire pixels on either the CTW or the PPE ads. Um, and we follow the process here to get our pixel matured. That means we're having 50, 100, 150 sales uh, and we have a good niche pixel now that we can take forward to our website conversion ads where we're basing optimization off a of pixel. So then we're gonna start running profitable campaigns here because our pixel's gonna be matured. We're gonna cut right to the people. We can do a little bit uh, of a different targeting here. We talk about how we wanna go after converters, people who are brand loyal if possible. Um, we're gonna scale out in a very similar fashion. Uh, we're letting run for a day. Uh, we're going to have another two to three days for optimization. We, the scaling here is exactly the same, trying to find that ceiling. Um, we're gonna, make sure that our click to website is strong on our website conversion ads that might make not make a lot of sense but basically are people clicking to our website it's a website conversion ad but i recommend that you use the 1200 by 1200 so you're going to have a link in the text there so you want to make sure that they're clicking that link and it might be your call to action is weak if it's not if people aren't clicking to your website but your ad is being shown then you might wanna take a look on the fact that your call to action might be weak. And we take some examples in the videos where you could uh, make sure that you're you know, uh, in congruency with your message here. So this is a website conversion ad. You want people to buy. So that's what you should be saying here. Um, kill the losers, obviously, across the two to three. If you're not making any sales, there's no reason to keep them running. Um, scale those winners. Uh, and then you can start scaling out at this point. Um, and I do this around the same time I'm scaling out with PPE. Scaling out means um, additional lower budget type ads. Um, and scaling up means increasing the budget. We're going to find a ceiling here. And eventually what we need to do is scale out. Um, and we're going to create lookalike audiences around that same fashion. You can see how we scale out here as well um, when the PPE ads and CTW ads are running. Um, in this growth period as well. Really, the growth period is about getting people who are uh, early adopters for your product. You know, the real early adopters are the guys that trust you, but and you introduce that to them, um, but then you're really gonna be scaling out into people who are early adopters, people that wanna have a product right off the bat, and they don't need to see it 100 times before they need to buy it you know they're gonna have some people that need to see that product over and over again you're gonna pick them up in your retargeting you're gonna pick them up in different things across all these different stages after this let's move into the maturity stage maturity is going to be what is going to uh, lead you to a like a lower uh, conversion rate your conversion rate is going to start to dip here a little bit we are going to introduce video ads hopefully before the dip um, or, or too significant of a dip. 
Video ads can be done at an earlier standpoint if you have a add to cart pixel that is matured. Um, the more pixel fires, the better. Thousands and thousands here is what's led me to be able to go very broad with my video ads and do over $50,000 in revenue off of a handful of ads. You're going to be targeting longer tail broad interest, something with a little nuance to it. And the example we used is not nursing, but nursing school. Just that little extra word there is going to help us target more of the right people. Uh, we're going to do the same type of review process and video ads are very favorable right now for scaling and you can win, you can scale up um, and cut down into winning demographics too. Um, more than I've ever seen, uh, or at least recently, um, compared to the other ad types. Now, see our, if your conversion rate is dipping um, and your cost per conversion rate is dying, uh, or is rising, sorry, um, you can maintain your ad spend and reduce your pricing. This is something that not a lot of people will teach you or talk about, but your pricing here, uh, reducing it is going to help you get um, people who had all the right intention of buying, um, they're the right people, they love the product, um, you put the right ad in front of them, but the price was the last thing here that prevented them from buying. So uh, you lower the price and that's going to actually help you utilize frequency um, in a way that a lot of people have never taken advantage of before. Frequency is not just about somebody seeing the ad again, they're actually going to be clicking to the website again. So, you know, they might hit it the second or the third time and go to it each time, maybe kind of forgetting that they saw the product already, but maybe kind of seeing what's going on with the product again. Now, if they go there for the second or third time and the pricing has reduced and they remember that, oh, it was too expensive last time, you're going to pick a lot of those people up, the later adopters here. Um, they needed to see a little bit of the um, product in the market. They need to see the social proof that you'll have on your comment section um, and seeing it just that two or three more times is what's really going to spike their purchase rates. So we've done a lot of money with just simply dropping the pricing just a little bit. We talk about that in the videos um, to really help you squeeze out some more ROI out of your product. Um, we're not just giving up on our ad spend. And then lastly, scaling back. Um, you're going to be scaling back during the decline phase. Basically, you're, you're letting your product die out here, but in a profitable manner. Um, you're going to be at the same time making sure that you have a new lead item that is in the introduction phase. And you can get a little bit better at this where you're, you're doing this in such a cycle where you never have a downtime. Um, if you have the staff and you have the ability to, to handle this kind of workload, you certainly can do that. Um, you're going to be reducing your budgets after you know you've reduced your pricing all you can you can add on a little bit um, to this to try to see if you can you know maybe a two for one special or something kind of a value add on here will spike the conversion one last time um, but basically we're going to be scaling our budgets back here um, and bringing our ads down to zero here and killing them off um, and having that new item take its place okay so that's it for this. We might have some more uh, down the road that'll be popped in here, but this is the product life cycle basically summarized in some mind maps for you to walk through and reference, especially when and, you know you could print these out and take some video or take some notes um, and then use these when you are running your ads. So take care, Good Schmidt.